Okay, hello everyone. Good morning to you. This is Mark Buzan joining you here from our wonderful co-working space in Gatineau, beautiful Gatineau, Quebec. You'll note I'm, I'm wearing my seersucker suit because it is hot outside. It's really hot. It's going to be hot today. So um, those of you joining us for the first time, we are broadcasting here from the page of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors on Facebook, my own personal uh, profile page on Facebook, from Periscope, and from YouTube as well. Those of you again, just this is your first time joining in on me, a little, a little bit about me so you know me. I am Mark Buzan. I am the founder of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors, a new virtual association, professional association, for people who serve on the boards of, as volunteers of not-for-profits, associations, charities, and the like. I'm also the founder of our association, our executive director association, Management Services, where we offer a whole gamut of different uh, services in all areas, not-for-profit consulting, including fundraising, uh, governance, management entirely of, of, non of, of boutique association offering services, Personalized uh, side of things, I'm a father of a wonderful little guy named uh, five-year-old named uh, Simon, and husband of wonderful wife, uh, my wonderful wife Carolina, as well. I'm a two-time association, not for profit, not for profit association executive director and president of two national associations. So all of this, which I just hope you get there, it's not to brag, frankly, it's just to give you an idea. I hope you believe when I'm talking to you, and I'm going to talk to you today about is something I've got some some background in a little bit of what I'm talking to you about. Today, I'm going to go a little bit more into the technical guy, technical things. Now, normally I talk to uh, our audience of those that are following us, the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors, a little more in the broader, loftier things about the role of the board and, and, and this. But I want to talk today a little bit more immediate direct things. And that's about show me the money, OK? This time uh, today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about personally my own case study experience of how I was able to successfully bring in over $525,000 of new revenues over a course of two and a half years, going from just three corporate sponsors to 36 in that period of time and significantly contributing towards that association's uh, Financial, their, their, their bottom line to get them out of uh, get them from out of the red and towards and towards the black as well. If you're interested on this, if you're listening to this uh, very much and you really want to know a little bit more about this, leave in the comments and say uh, hashtag Show me the money. Okay, show me the money. If you're watching this live, say uh, two. I want two hashtags. I want Show me the money and I want as well live. Okay, hashtag there. If you're watching this in the replay. So show me the money and replay as well, okay? Just so I wanna know, and if you're interested in that, leave in the comments below, wherever you're listening in on, uh, as I mentioned, to Periscope, to Facebook or YouTube, uh, leave comments and I'd we'll, uh, love to reach out to you and, and you can get uh, perhaps at some point as well, leaving the transcript for this, uh, for, for this session as well. So why is this so important? If you're, so, if you're interested in this, why, why is this so important? I, I, I found, frankly, a problem that exists amongst non-for-profits. And it doesn't matter if, and I say, when I say non-profits, I have a big umbrella under which they're all there because there's a large family of what they're there. There's, you've got the charitable foundation, charitables, you've got the foundations, you've got co-ops, you've got, and in my instance, for more of my background, though I have some charitable background, it's largely even from professional trade association, professional and trade associations as well. It's this attitude that somehow nonprofit means making no profit, or nonprofit equals poor. Wrong. Okay, tell me in the comments if you think that you agree with me. This is just so wrong. Nonprofit simply means that the investment and the monies that are made are reinvested back into the into the mission to advance and better make our, our society. How, tell me if you think that that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. And that's why I've devised probably the better part of 20 plus years of my career in this sector as well, because I believe so much 
in the power of what not-for-profit or, uh, not-for-profit organizations can do to advance and make this a better world as well. So this problem mentality comes about from, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a, a, a poor perception or an understanding that they cannot be and they should not be entrepreneurial. That's so, so wrong. So, so wrong in, in, in there. The problem and the, and the result of this is that you end up with a few things. One, I've seen this happen time and time again, particularly with your organization, if you rely very much on grants, governments, like this. Folks, that's a whole other topic and I like this, but I tell you right now, I, you, you've got to get off what I call the revenue roller coaster, okay? The problem with it, this is that often enough there, donors of that type of grants, they've got an idea of what their pet project is of what they want to do. And then, and sometimes that aligns and sometimes it doesn't there. And you can spend a lot hours and hours and hours and hours trying to fill out applications and beautiful pro- proposals and get that going. And maybe you're successful. Great. I, I hope you are successful with that's right there. But too often in time enough, I hear about the stress and worry about staff from board as well as, are we going to get it next year? Are we going to get it next year? Are we going to get it next year? And the second trouble with that, uh, with that process is that they're often held hostage to what's the, that foundations or that, that government uh, grant giver or whoever that may be idea very much of what makes for uh, a, 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 a worthy cause. Rarely do they ever encounter basic things that you just need to be able to keep the lights on, like paying good people, good salaries, keeping the lights on, having a place to work, equipment, IT, and all these kinds of things that are just simply needed to keep the organization going as well. So that's, that's a challenge often there. And then as a result of uh, uh, often of this is because sometimes because the, the nature of your organization's mission may be very much a, a very much of a niche. I happen to find often enough by relying on those sources, you're just so much you're capped at your potential. Because only certain amounts of, uh, of grants out there are going to going to approach this kind of thing. So I, that this, like I said, this is a whole other topic I could get on, and I could get on a whole of my soapbox and rant as to why I'm not a big fan of uh, of, of, of the grant uh, process. Like this. I don't want to say completely gone out there, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of them. But so so this this leads me into my own personal experience. After leading two national trade associations, I went back into the consulting world and did a few things and uh, exposed more and more to this big challenge of the the revenue challenge. And when I was approached and uh, I took the the opportunity most most recently in June 2016 to become the director of uh, business development and corporate partnerships with the Association of Consulting Engineering Companies of Canada, they were in an interesting situation. Now, this association uh, was not on, uh, on dire straits in any form or another, but they much like I talked about the revenue cap was faced uh, by the fact that they needed, they, they were facing this challenge and they needed to diversify their revenue sources. A number of challenges that happened in, in, in their industry, in the engineering industry, that meant that memberships were, were, were not really keeping up with what the operational requirements uh, were coming out, or rather, membership revenues weren't coming up with the operational requirements. So the board had the, uh, the wisdom to say, you know, it's time for us to diversify our sources. And a huge opportunity was there in sponsorships that was untapped. But they had no no serious real background in going out and after after corporate sponsorships. They didn't have a lot of corporate collateral. A lot of what they would do uh, with their with their three current that, that their three partners that they had at that point in time was what I would call the traditional slap up a logo and we'll talk in a year from now, which is not very appealing for many uh, many kind of perspective uh, sponsors. So. I came in with a very objective, with a very aggressive goal. They needed to acquire three hundred thousand dollars in new revenues, current revenues, in a span of three years. 
And they wanted to go at this largely from, first and foremost, from sponsorships. Another element that I felt that we figured out, we worked together, that we could get an element through uh, events as well as a great way of revenue sources for the association. And then as well as beyond that, if there was an opportunity for other kinds of uh, you know, donations to, uh, to our own foundation, support of another foundation or and memberships as well into, into the organization. We had no lists. We had no power, uh, no power background and a big, 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 fat, ugly, hairy number in front of us that had to be accomplished. So here's what I did. Step one, I looked at a hard, I looked really long and hard at what were the assets of this organization. What do I mean by assets? I changed the frame of mind of that away from a beggar where we are going out specifically to members and saying, you, you know what, you need to donate to this organization, you need to support it because it's the right thing to do, as I often call guilting people <laughs> into supporting your organization. Let me tell you something, that doesn't work well, folks. It does, does stop trying to guilt people into doing things. There. A lot of what our offering go as well to sponsors in particular was the very traditional kind of thing, what we call the GSB. The gold, silver, bronze, slap up a, slap up a logo uh, at our annual event. And uh, well, let's, let's, uh, I hope you're happy with that. And let's, let's, let's talk a year or so from now as well. Instead, I went out to our current and past sponsors and asked them really, what's going on in your world? What's going on in your world? What do you find very uh, effective? And how are you going about and developing your business, developing your marketing, and how would you sort of view that as being replicated through involvement in our organization, if, if, if at all? And you know, folks, the results of that, that, that information were really, really telling because it great, great ideas for us as well to develop our own kind of assets. The second, uh, the second thing that we moved forward on it was particularly, again, further on the development of our assets there, but we broke it down into different elements, okay? Describing specifically as it relate to the benefit that someone would, would support our organization would get out of this. So away from the whole aspect of we'll slap your logo up and my God, you'll, get great, uh, you'll great, get great exposure. That, was, that, that ended up being really, really, really silly. And as one, problem, and as one uh, prospective client told me, it was a very large, very, very large corporate bank with a huge brand name recognition said, hey, Mark, are you really thinking that by all means you can get us a bigger brand recognition than what we already have? And you know what? He had a point. It was probably the other way around. So we, uh, we looked very clearly and, it, and, and, and broke down what I called the menu document of all the different assets that would be of value, prospective value to sponsors. We also work very carefully on the membership side of things towards uh, affiliate or associate uh, members of uh, breaking down what would be the prospective dollar for dollar value of this. I've got a whole process on this folks. If you're really interested in knowing what that, uh, what that whole process is of changing the mentality of if you've got a membership type of organization away from guilting people towards proving to that to prospective members and current members that this is, there's a value add and a, and a dollar for dollar value on that. This leave a comment there and I, we can talk about that. That's a whole other, probably a broadcast at another point in time. So you see right off the bat, this, the changing of the perceptions was very much about this. And most importantly, after this, the next step was as, as we, built, I well, feverishly and built out a very extensive prospect list. Now, not something just something that just whipping out of, uh, out, of, uh, out of the air that you think that this person should support us because what? Oh, there. No, we went very, I went very carefully and identified the type of profile of individual within the various types of organizations on the verticals of who we knew were going to be able, who had had an interest in reaching the clientele that we reached out to as well. Again, I could get into all that very uh, in deeply, but that's probably specifically uh, another broadcast. I want to give you all broad strokes at this point in time. So we built a CRM based on that, based on our verticals, based on, uh, on who we were trying to reach and who we thought that uh, as well would benefit from reaching 
Yes. And then above all, and the final and fourth step of this is, folks, we went out to market. We went out to market and, 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 and rather than try to pitch pre-programmed or jammed up pro, uh, uh, GSB pro, uh, programs that says, you know, you will get this and uh, by God, you will like it and like this. You know what? The fact of the matter is, is you're going to find as you go out to, to market is that from supporters and, and donors and sponsors, no two people's uh, idea of what value is, is going to be the same to the next. So I went in there without prejudging. We went out there very specifically and asked, you know, here's some of the things that we've come across, we've developed. What would, you, what, what would be a value to you? And listened. It's good sales, just a simple good sales, uh, salesmanship, simple entrepreneurship of going out there. And bit by bit, I can tell you folks, we're very successful over the course of that two and a half years of going from just three partners to 36 and the cumulative effect of over that period of time was over $525,000 in new and recurring income. Now, there's just a, just a, I, I've given you just the, really the, 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 the overview of all of the process and a very quick broadcast here. If you're interested in learning more about this process, about how you can get these organizations, there's a lot of steps that are involved in this. I'd love to entertain a conversation with you at any given point in time. These are the kinds of resources as well that are available through the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors. If you are a board director, of a not-for-profit association, foundation, charity. Find out more about the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors at nonprofitboarddirectors.org. As well, if you want to talk to me as well, I, mean, I lead up the, the society. Society is one of the clients of, of our, uh, our uh, Executive Director Association Management Services, but our Executive Director Association Management Services also offers some consulting and some help. I'd love to be able to work in, in, and talk with you as well about how we can change that dynamic from the poverty mentality towards profitability and adding revenue and sources uh, to your organization. Folks, again, love to, uh, love to connect with you. If you're interested in hearing more about this, please get the word out. It helps us certainly like this. And above all, heart this, like this. It helps all not much to get the word out about what effective non-for-profit service uh, and board service should all be about. Okay, so thanks very much, everyone, and uh, have a great day.